Hi and welcome to a new episode of White Code. Today we'll continue talking about the problem ranked number one in USA and the whole entire world as a direct cause of death. That dependency that cost a country like a USA almost $300 billion a year. We will continue talking about the most common substance abuse in the world, which is nicotine dependency or smoking. Smoking now started to be more prevalent even among high schoolers and the statistics showing 18 to 24 percent of high schoolers are smoking now. Even it got to the middle schoolers. And it's my pleasure today to host one of the best doctors and addictionologists in Southern California, Dr. Joseph DeSanto, to teach us more about the disease and the effects <coughs> and the lines of treatment as well. As you know by now, for interaction with the program, send in all your questions or con concerns to our Facebook official page, White Coat, or if you have any questions or concerns or you want to interact with our guests directly, you can call the numbers that will be shown on the screen at any time during the episode. أعزائي مشاهدي قنوات الكارما في كل مكان في العالم، أعزائي مشاهدي وايت كوت، الحقيقة النهاردة أصريت إن إحنا نتكلم على نفس المشكلة الكبيرة اللي بدأناها المرة اللي فاتت، والحقيقة إنه كتير قوي من الرسائل جات لي على الفيسبوك بتقول إن هي مجرد عادة سيئة، النهاردة مصرين إن إحنا بنسميها أو مش إحنا اللي بنسميها الإحصائيات وكل الدراسات بتقول إنه رقم واحد كمادة مدمنة على مستوى العالم إذا هو نوع من الإدمان هو النيكوتين كمان هو رقم واحد هنا سواء هنا في أمريكا أو في العالم كله أول سبب من أسباب الموت دايركتلي من تدخين السجاير مش كده وبس كمان تقريبا الكوست بتاعته أو التكلفة بتاعته في دولة زي الولايات المتحدة بس 300 مليار دولار في السنة تخيلوا حضراتكم معايا الرقم 300 مليار دولار في السنة الرقم ده بيتقسم كالاتي تقريبا 180 مليار دولار في السنة تكاليف الحاجات أو المشاكل الصحية أو علاج المشاكل الصحية اللي بتحصل و157 مليار دولار في السنة في دولة واحدة في العالم هنا بتبقى مشتريات لل لل للسجاير وما شابه وهنقول ايه الحاجات اللي شبه السجاير كمان النهارده هنكسر كل المفاهيم الغلط اللي زي انه الشيشه انضف كتير من السجاير لانه ما فيهاش حاجات بتتحرق ده هنتكلم عليه النهارده هنتكلم كمان على الالكترونيك سيجريتس والفيبس اللي ظهرت جديده بين الشباب وهنقول الدراسات ايه اللي حصل وايه عيوبها ايه مشاكلها مش بس كده كمان هنتكلم على حاجة مهمة جدا وهي العلاقة بين السمنة والتدخين العلاقة بين تدخين المروانة والسمنة هنتكلم على كل الحاجات دي وهنوري حضراتكم الدراسات أحدث دراسات تقريبا نزلت في العالم كله على الحاجات دي فمهم جدا النهاردة حلقتنا زي ما أنا بقول الإحصائيات 18 ل 24 في المية من الشباب اللي في سنة ويبتدى يدخن يعني تقريبا واحد من كل أربعة نسبة مرعبة جدا ابتدى كمان ينزل للميدل سكولرز او الشباب اللي في اعدادي بقت لسه الدراسات ما اتعملتش عليه بس كتير جدا من الميدل سكولرز لانهم ابتدوا يدخنوا مضموع موضوع صعب جدا عايزين النهارده نوري حضراتكم كل الجوانب بتاعته هيسعدنا ان احنا نتلقى اي اسئله من حضراتكم على صفحتنا الرئيسيه زي ما انتم عارفين دلوقتي على الفيسبوك وايت كوت دي اللي ظاهره قدامكم على الشاشه حضراتكم ابعتوا لنا اي اسئله خاصة بالموضوع ده وخصوصا انه اوريدي ابتدى يجي لنا اسئلة كتيرة جدا على السكند هاند سموكرز او الناس اللي حوالين المدخن اللي عايشة حوالين المدخن بتتأثر ازاي وده كمان هنجاوبه النهاردة لو حضراتكم ليكوا اسئلة دايركت على الادوية اللي بتستخدم في ال... في... في علاج النوع ده من هنسميه نوع من انواع الادمان خلاص دلوقتي النيكوتين ديبندنس آه حضراتكم تقدروا تبعتوا لنا كل الاسئلة تتصلوا بالرقم الموجود على الشاشة وتكلموا دايركت مع الضيف على كل الاوبشنز الموجوده في السوق حاليا للتخلص من النوع ده من المرض او النوع ده من الادمان اللي هو النيكوتين ديبندنس او لحضراتكم اي اسئله عن التدخين باي شكل من الاشكال اتصلوا على الارقام الموجوده على الشاشه في اي وقت من وقت الحلقه وهيساعدنا ان احنا نتلقى تليفونات حضراتكم مش عايز اطول كتير في المقدمه عشان نبتدي فقراتنا النهارده لانه موضوع مهم جدا وانا متحمس ان حضراتكم تعرفوا كل حاجه عليه فيلا بينا نبتدي برنامجنا النهارده من وايت كوت عن التدخين.
Hi, I'm Dr. Joseph DeSanto, and I'm the medical director of DeSanto Clinics here in Costa Mesa, California. My specialties are internal medicine and addiction medicine. These are both very important to me because I myself am in recovery and have been for the past six years. Uh, I bring to my patients a special dedication to the field of addiction medicine that allows me to relate to them on a very special basis. Uh, here at my clinic called the DeSanto Clinics, uh, I see patients that uh, are trying to get off of drugs and alcohol and are trying to get back to their regular lives. I was born and raised in New York City. Went to medical school actually in Brooklyn. Went to college at Lafayette College, went back to Brooklyn to State University of New York at Downstate, which is located in Brooklyn, New York. And then I came out here to do, in Los Angeles, California, to do my internship and my residency in internal medicine. Uh, I then practiced urgent care and internal medicine in private practice for several years. I am uh, currently the medical director at several treatment facilities in the Orange County area. And, and I see several patients um, a day from treatment centers and help them with their detoxification plans and their chronic medical problems as they progress through sobriety. It's very important for me to see my patients get sober and to help them and providing cutting edge techniques and testing to help them along the way. I'm also the co-host of The Recovery Show with Dr. Joe and Angelina on KOCI 101.5 FM and we have a live radio show dedicated to recovery. It seems like an addiction doctor's work is never, uh, never finished and we're never able to get away from the office, but what I do like is spending time with my family. Uh, I enjoy scuba diving, I enjoy skiing, I enjoy hiking, and around the coast of California and Laguna Beach and Newport Beach, the coastal area is beautiful, and so we enjoy doing that. Uh, I also enjoy uh, participating in yoga. Uh, Eastern philosophy guides uh, how I treat people. Uh, I treat people with care, understanding, patience, and love. What I find very interesting is that I've chosen a specialty uh, that is very close to my heart. As I said before, I'm in recovery myself. I experienced an, inju an injury several years ago and um, became dependent and then addicted on prescription medication. It is, it is through the grace of God that I have my life right now and uh, I'm able to give back as, as much as I am right now. Since I've gotten sober six years ago, I've dedicated my life to this specialty, and uh, I don't even look at coming to, to work as, as a job anymore. Um, I enjoy what I do. Uh, it's become part of my life, uh, and I can't, I can't imagine doing anything else. Stay tuned for me live on Al Karma TV and White Coat. اهلا بحضراتكم مره تانيه في حلقتنا النهارده المهمه جدا عن التدخين مهم جدا ان احنا زي ما انا قلت نعرف كل الموضوع من الجوانب الجوانب المختلفه بتاعته مهم جدا ان احنا نتكلم كمان على كل الحاجات اللي ابتدت تظهر جديد والشباب بيناقشونا فيها مهم جدا ان احنا عندنا كمان يبقى ردود علميه ليها It's my pleasure today to host one of actually White Coat family, Dr. Joseph DeSanto, uh, again on White Coat. It's our Part of pleasure. The family always. now, all right. right. That's good. We're one of White Coat graduated. family. Graduated. Right? Excellent. Um, and I'll start with a question. Might look so dumb because I got a lot of like uh, questions about that. I hear we got quite a quite a few questions already. A lot already. of questions yeah. already. Right, ready to roll. So my first question, which might look dumb, is: the smoking is a bad habit? or it's nicotine dependence as a disease, one, it's one form of the addiction forms that we have. Wow, good, good first question. All right, is it a habit or is it an addiction? It, or is it a nicotine addiction? Uh, is it, or is it both? I mean, well, it's certainly not a good habit, I'll tell you that. Okay. Um, I've never seen anybody benefit from, from smoking. Um, right. But nicotine is definitely a substance that you can get addicted to. Okay. It, is, um, it qualifies in the DSM-5. Uh, it's got addictive properties. You can get addicted to it in a couple of weeks or even sooner. And, um, and there is a withdrawal period. So it satisfies all of the, um, all of the criteria of being an addiction. Um, so 
you said it has a diagnosis. Do we have a diagnosis code called nicotine dependence? It's called nicotine dependence, okay. correct. So it is a diagnosis Absolutely. code. Okay. الحقيقة أول سؤال والحقيقة السؤال ده جالي كتير جدا وتهاجمنا شوية على صفحتنا على الفيسبوك إنه التدخين عادة سيئة وناس كتير بعتت لي قالت لي هو مجرد عادة سيئة الحقيقة الرد العلمي للموضوع ده إن التدخين مش عادة سيئة التدخين نوع من أنواع الإدمان التدخين زيه زي أي حاجات تانية وزي ما كان لفترة طويلة قبل كده بنسميه البوابة للمواد الأصعب بعد كده ولكن دلوقتي زي ما احنا قلنا بقت المروانة ولكن زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو التدخين نوع من أنواع الإدمان وده يعني خلاص شيء راسخ فكل الـ 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 يعني الكومنتس الهجومية شوية اللي جات لي إنه مجرد عادة سيئة احنا بنتكلم على رقم واحد الإدمان في العالم كله دلوقتي So if we're talking about smoking today let's, let's destroy some myth or wrong concepts like that's it. out there in the society now and the first one, and we got a lot of questions about this, is electronic cigarettes and vapes. Mm -hmm. What's your input about this? Uh, it's still a delivery system for nicotine. Okay. S early studies, and I'm going I'm to I'm go on, um, don't, don't completely quote me, but early studies have shown that it's, uh, it's not as bad for your lungs as regular cigarette smoke. We do not have long-term studies. However, we do know that it is an incredible way to, um, incredibly powerful way to deliver nicotine to the body. Okay. And, um, and with vaping and with e-cigarettes, you can get way more nicotine per puff than you can with a, with a regular cigarette. So, so we do start getting into dangerous levels of nicotine. So the nicotine level in those stuff is not regulated? Uh, it is not regulated. Okay. Um, um, it, it does come on every bottle of, of the nicotine um, uh, juice, they call right. it. Milligrams. The so milligram liquid. strength. They even sell some, uh, some vape uh, juice that's mm -hmm. zero milligrams. Okay. Uh, of nicotine. Of nicotine. Okay. So just to have the actual experience to keep people going. But would yeah. it develop the risk of getting addicted to it or to nicotine? Yeah. If you're exposed to nicotine, no matter how you get it into your body, whether it's, we're going to be talking about hookah, uh, no matter how you get it into your body, chewing tobacco, you can and eventually will become addicted. Okay. Uh, الحقيقة زي ما دكتور دي سانتو قال أول سؤال وأنا حبيت أبتدي بيه على طول عشان uh, يعني نرد على النقطة دي ولأنه النقطة اتبعتت لنا كتير جدا فكرة الإلكترونيك سيجاريتس أو الفيبس وهنشوف صورهم دلوقتي على الشاشة الإلكترونيك فيبس أو السيجاريت دي حاجات جديدة الناس بتحط فيها سائل زي ما حضراتكم شايفينه uh, بنسميه الجوس أو العصير بتاعها لو نرجع تاني الإلكترونيك سيجاريتس أول صورة uh, الناس هتشوف العصير أو بيسموه يعني السائل اللي موجود اللي هو البني اللي موجود ده uh, وده بيحطوه بيبقى فيه نيكوتين uh, وبس هي الفكرة كلها إنه ما بيبقاش فيه البارتيكلز التانية بس زي ما اتفقنا من البداية إن احنا بنتكلم على صورة من صور الإدمان أو النيكوتين ديبندنس زي ما بنقول أو التعود على النيكوتين فزي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو إنه دي وسيلة من توصيل النيكوتين لجسمك فأولا مشكلتها الرئيسية إنه احنا مش عارفين كمية النيكوتين اللي موجودة فيها قد إيه الريجيليشنز ما بتقولناش قد إيه الحاجة التانية السيئة جدا فيها إنه بتسبب التعود على النيكوتين زيها زي السجاير فما نتخيلش إن هي أفضل بكتير من السجاير فيها كيميكالز فيها مواد كيماوية أيوة فيها مواد كيماوية ونفس الريسك تقريبا إن أنت to get addicted uh, ليها فده شيء مهم جدا Now the second most common question is hookahs or we call it in the Middle East shisha. Shisha, yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So what about shisha? What, what can we tell people about shisha today? Because the wrong concept, it's much cleaner. Uh, it's like goes through water and stuff. So it purifies the, the smoke. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the myth. How can we correct this today? Okay, yeah, th the myth is, is that it's safer. You know, I've smoked, I've smoked hookah myself. I have to admit it. Um, okay. We have lounges all around Southern California. And it, how mm -hmm. can it be? How can it be safer? First of all, I mean, it's 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 definitely not. The amount of volume of smoke that you take into your lungs during one hookah session, I believe, is 200 times wow. greater than a regular cigarette. You puff a hookah per session around 200 times, they say, okay. and you smoke. You take 20 puffs off it off your typical cigarette. Wow. Plus, you're you're a primary smoker and a secondhand smoker for the crowd around you, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're you're. 
So you're blowing smoke out, and if you're sitting around a hookah with seven or eight people, you're getting the secondhand smoke from seven or eight people. So there's no let up on the smoke during, and if you're in a, a hookah bar for two, three hours, then you the do this several time. times a right. week. I mean, you, you can see the damage that you cause. Right. Plus, plus the charcoal that you use to light the hookah right. itself releases so much carbon uh, monoxide, monoxide right. that's not filtered. Right. by the water. That will pass through the water. Right. So, I mean, you're, you're exposing yeah. to so the an, an unknown carcinogen. So is not filtered. That's no, one of them. No. Okay. And, and just because there's fruit in it doesn't mean it's healthy. Right. <laughs> Which, I don't know if that's a common myth, but uh, yeah, it is. That's what I was thinking about that when I was uh, doing it. Uh, at least I'm getting they're fruit. They're basically <laughs> depending on, um, it's purified during water and the pipe system that it has, so it's cleaner than cigarettes, mm -hmm. but it, it, it thank does, you so it does much for correcting some this. of the impurities, yeah. The question is another question, so today, we are basically, the main thing that we have to do is that we have to cut all the wrong things. The first thing we have to talk about is that it is not a bad thing, it is not a bad thing, it is a bad thing. The second thing we have to talk about is electronic cigarettes and vapes, and we said that these things are dangerous, and it is a bad thing, and it is a bad thing, and it is a bad thing, and it is a bad thing. الحاجة الثالثة وكمان الكمية السائل اللي فيها مش منظم وبالتالي احنا ما نعرفش نيكوتين قد ايه بيدخل جسمك ناس كتير بتتضر لانه بتستهلك كميات نيكوتين كبيرة جدا النقطة الثالثة النهاردة ودي موجودة في ثقافتنا في الميدل ايست كتير الميدل ايست كتيرة جدا وثقافتنا العربية الشيشة او اللي بنسميها هنا الهوكا ناس كتير قوي بتقول لا 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 يا عم الشيشه نظيفه والشيشه بتعدي على ميه وبتتنقى والكلام ده كله ده كله كلام فاضي لان زي ما دكتور دي سانتو قال سيشن واحد او قعده واحده من قعدات الشيشه حضرتك بتستهلك ال ال الدخان اللي انت بت بتدخنه والدخان اللي الناس حواليك بتدخنه زي ما احنا شايفين كده آه فده مش آه ده رقم واحد انه ده شيء سيء جدا الحاجه الثانيه زي ما دكتور دي سانتو قال الفحم او التشاركول الموجود وبيتحلق ده ما بيدخلش جوه الميه فما ملوش بيوريفيكيشن ملوش تنقيه وبالتالي انت بتاخد حرق الفحم بدل ما انت بتاخد حرق التوباكو في السجاير. الحاجه اللي انا عايز اعمل عليها ستريس واضغط عليها قوي انه 60 دقيقه من الهوكا او من الشيشه 60 دقيقه تدخين لو انت قاعد زي ما الدكتور دي سانتو قال قاعد مع 6 7 حواليك فانت كانك تقريبا كل الدراسات بتقول ان انت دخنت من 100 ل 200 سيجاره. فتخيل حضرتك في ساعه واحده لانه انت مش بس بتدخن الدخان اللي انت بتستخدمه ولكن انت انت سكند هاند سموكر كمان اللي حواليك فساعه واحده تقريبا من الشيشه او من الهوكا بتساوي 100 ل 200 سيجاره او 100 ل 200 مره من حجم الدخان اللي بيطلع من سيجاره واحده يا ريت نعمل هايلايت لانه انا عجباني جدا السلايد دي وير تراين تو هايلايت 100 تو 100 تايمز ذا فوليوم اوف سموك As some interesting things that we didn't talk about with e-cigarettes or with hookah, uh, it allows kids, children between the ages, adolescents between the ages of 15 and 21 to become introduced to Nicotine. Um, a gentler form of smoke. So hookah goes through water, it cools the smoke, it allows you to get more smoke and more nicotine into your system. Right. And you get used to the fruity flavors and the social setting. With e-cigarettes, it's the same thing. that Most adolescents who start using either vapes or e-cigarettes before the age of 18, typically stay with that form of nicotine okay. um, um, administration. And, they, and they, they find that they're not switching over to cigarettes. So that may be a good thing. It, however, e-cigarette use does make you two to three times more likely to pick up cigarettes. Um, we got some questions. So it is a gateway drug, if you want to call it a gateway right. drug. Yeah. Facebook question from mm -hmm. a guy named Shelly. Um, he's asking, is there any way of treatment? So we'll answer this like today, right? Oh, we'll get to that. So Shadi, is the nana and all kol anwa al alaj wa kol turu al alaj al jadida wa ik mashakel kol wahda wa hanwarik ansa b wahda lik ya rit baat lana bedakhan kam sigara fil yom aw bedakhan ad ee taqriban fil yom wa wa hna han all lak ansa b alaj lik ee. Zay ma al doctor Desanto tani lama bedakhan wa hna hawalina atfal wa shisha di asli yani. الحقيقه انا مركز على النقطه دي لانه في قعدتنا ك ك كشرق اوسطيين او في المجتمعات العربيه فاحنا بن زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو بنوري مثال سيء جدا لاولادنا الصغيرين وبنقول لهم انه اتس اوكي ان انت تدخن هوكا ودي الفورم الانضف زي ما بنقول من التدخين ولكن ده شيء سيء جدا بيست مثال سيء جدا لاولادنا فياريت 
اللي متخيل انه شيشه انضف بنقول لحضرتك ان انت في ساعه واحده بتدخن من 100 ل 200 سيجاره بتدخن الدخان بتاعك والدخان اللي حواليك زائد المثال اللي احنا بنديه لاطفالنا في الوقت ده مثال سيء جدا 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 فيا ريت كل اللي مفكر انه شيشه دي حاجه كويسه وحاجه انضف وحاجه كويسه يمتنع تماما عليها وهنقول كمان ازاي. So since we're talking about nicotine dependency, so usually it's associated, and I know that will offend some people on Facebook, uh, nicotine comes along with other forms of dependency, mm -hmm. opiate, benzodiazepine, whatever that substance is. So quitting smoking in, in, in the recovery phase, how does it help the addict to stay off drugs? So you're talking about an addict who's now wanting to quit other drugs. Forms, right, and he's smoking as well. Well. Let me just start off by saying that that's probably one of the one of the biggest um, roadblocks that we're seeing in the, in the treatment industry right. is that people continue smoking, and occasionally you'll see a treatment center that pops up that is a smoke-free environment, and we find that those treatment centers don't last very long. Okay. Because people want to smoke their cigarettes, it's the one way to to get dopamine into the brain. They've used drugs for so many years that has given them so much dopamine, and this is the only thing how th they have left. So you'll always see 20, 30, 40, you know, young kids outside treatment centers just puffing away, smoking. I'll, I'll stop you here. Yeah. You're telling me it stimulate the same pathway of other drugs, dopamine. Absolutely, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the, the, when, you're, when you're in recovery, when you're in early recovery, it makes perfect sense to quit everything at the same time. Okay. You're going through the struggles of quitting, let's just say heroin is your drug of choice. Sure. You're quitting heroin, that's pretty monumental. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have some, some, some wicked withdrawal symptoms. Why not stop smoking during that time? Right. All kind of addictions all together at once. But, but the advice that most doctors give patients who are quitting other things, oh, one thing at a time, you don't wanna, you know, don't go too fast, this'll cause relapse, this'll cause, Actually, it's the opposite. You have a greater chance. You have a 20% increased chance of relapsing. Probably even more that I see of relapsing to your drug of choice if you don't quit smoking at the same time. Okay. A lot of studies have shown that you have 300 times the chances to stay sober if you quit smoking at the same time. Yeah, with other if drugs. you can stay quit for two years. Absolutely. For two years. Mm -hmm. so, so you have lifelong sobriety from both substances. 300 nice. times chances to stay sober. I would say it's, yeah, okay. oh yeah. Probably but, more than that. Uh, yeah, uh, and that includes, before I translate, that includes, because some people, they don't have to go to a rehab center, but they're addicted at home to alcohol and cigarettes at the same time. And we see that combination a lot. Mm -hmm. So that includes alcohol, too. If you're addicted to alcohol and cigarettes at the same time, typically when you stop drinking, or we're going to talk about this, associated, because it becomes habitual, and you associate your cup of coffee after a meal. When you have a drink, oh, I only smoke when I drink. I hear that a lot. That's right. how people get started. So quitting alcohol may even make it easier to quit smoking. Okay. And you may find that when you're not altered from alcohol, cigarettes taste like So we're crud. cutting that pairing between alcohol and cigarettes. Yeah, okay. yeah you, you, you're, breaking your ha you're breaking your activity with the habit, the, the coping mecha mechanism with the, uh, and we'll talk we'll about talk that. About the yeah, later mechanism. on the show, it's interesting. Right. If you think about it that way. Yeah. آه الحقيقة برضو آه من الحاجات المهمة جدا الناس آه وإحنا عملنا حملة كاملة على الإدمان الناس اللي عادة لقوا تقريبا 79 أنا آسف 97% في المية من الناس المدمنين لحاجات تانية زي الأوبيتس زي المورفين والهيروين زي الكوكايين آه زي الكحوليات بشكل عام زي المنومات والمهدئات اللي هما بنسميهم مجموعة البنزودازيبين لأنه 97% في المية من المدمنين لحاجات تانية عادة بيدخنوا وزي ما احنا قلنا التدخين هو المدخل هو البدايه ومش هنسميه التدخين يعني اني مور بقى لما هسميه من هنا ورايح هو ادمان النيكوتين مهم جدا ان احنا يعني نركز في المبدا ده النهارده جدا ونسميه ادمان النيكوتين فادمان النيكوتين تقريبا ده انه 97% من الناس اللي مدمنين حاجات تانية بيدمنوا النيكوتين معاهم زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو اذا انت عايز حضرتك يعني واقع في المشكله دي لادمان اي حاجه كحوليات مورفين هيروين كوكايين كل الحاجات اللي انا قلتها دي هيبقى اسهل لك بكتير ان انت وانت بتبطل دول تبطل التدخين كمان لانه زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو انه ان انت تفضل تدخن وتبطل الحاجات التانية ده هيعمل لك ريلابس هيرجعك تدمن الحاجات التانية حاجة كمان مهمة جدا انه 
لو حضرتك رحت مصحة للعلاج الإدمان وبطلت التدخين لمدة سنتين مع الحاجات التانية اللي حضرتك كنت أو حضرتك كنت مدمناها تقريبا عندك 300 مرة أو 300 ضعف إن أنت تفضل سوبر وما ترجعش للدراجز دي تاني. مهم جدا إن أنا كنت أركز على النقطة دي النهاردة وأسأل دكتور دي سانتو عليها إن إحنا نوري حضراتكم التلاحم اللي موجود بين الـ الـ الأنواع التانية من الإدمان والنيكوتين كمان لأنه ده مهم جدا. Since uh, our campaign uh, is about obesity and uh, wellness and weight loss, so let's connect it to smoking as well. There is a myth that when you smoke, you would lose weight. When you stop smoking, you would gain weight. Mm -hmm. So we have like nice studies today to show to our audience. Yeah, some recent studies have shown actually the opposite. Uh, there was a study out of Japan uh, that showed your body mass index, which is how fat you are, how heavy you are, is directly related to how many cigarettes you've smoked over how many years. Right. So the people that have smoked, you know, a long... So what you have to look at is the short-term effects and the long-term effects. Right. When you have short-term effects of smoking, yes, it will reduce your appetite in the beginning, but you have to look at it over the long run. Once you start smoking, then your lungs start being, you know, able to handle... Uh, right. Heavy exercise goes down. And then over time, you're less active. You become more sedentary, and then that's why the weight gain happens. Okay. Um, so the first myth we're breaking today with the first study, uh, can we put it again? Mm -hmm. That's the study. It shows that there is a relation between um, how many packs of cigarettes you're smoking a day and your BMI. And the more you smoke, the more that BMI goes up. Yep. زي ما زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو دلوقتي لانه برضو دي حاجه من الحاجات المفاهيم الغلط اللي هنكسرها في حلقه النهارده ونوري حضراتكم انه ده غلط جدا جدا انه دايما عندنا مفهوم انه طول ما انا بدخن انا وزني بيقل واول ما هبطل تدخين وزني هيزيد بيحصل في حالات عشان بس نبقى امناء في الطرح ولكن كل الاستاديز الجديده ده كان مفهوم قديم كل الاستاديز الجديدة بتقول انه في علاقة ما بين التدخين كم علبة انت بتدخنها كل يوم وبين مؤشر كتلة الجسم اللي احنا شرحناه قبل كده او اللي هو البي ام اي كل ما حضرتك بتدخن اكتر قدرتك على ان انت تعمل انشطة في اليوم بتقل وقدرتك على الحركة بتقل, بتقل وبالتالي وزنك بيزيد جدا فكل ما زودت التدخين وزنك بيزيد اكتر What other studies do we have like as a relation between smoking and uh, and body, like body mass index and all that stuff. Oh, well, there's a good study out of the British Medical Journal in 2015. Right. That actually shows that there's no relationship between... At all. Yeah, at all. Okay. <laughs> so, the the study or the study that we have done, it was done in Inglaterra, the first it was done in Japan, the second it was done in Inglaterra, it tells you that there's no relationship between your weight and your weight and your weight that you're going to be doing. So, this is all a mistake. The third study will show us the relation between secondhand smokers and, uh, and uh, obesity or glucose intolerance and all that stuff. And that will answer a lot of questions that we got today about secondhand smokers. Yeah, you know, this, the questions about secondhand smoke have always been related to, oh, am I going to get cancer? Am I going to get emphysema? But what about the stuff that the nicotine causes, right. like heart disease, like Diabetes, you know, glucose intolerance, which leads to diabetes. I mean, all of these things are reduce people's lives a lot. You know, we we as doctors are looking to get people to live as long and as healthy as possible. Right. So we really have to start looking at numbers rather than feelings. You know, we have to look at facts and we have to look at what keeps us healthy and what keeps us alive the longest. Right. So, so your message in this, don't, don't just worry about COPD and emphysema, there is other stuff to worry about. Right, and the study that you're talking about, I mean, that's, it's, it was a huge study. It was uh, how, how many thousands of patients? Uh, six, 16, 6,000 6, patients. Uh -huh. um, and it, it, it was done over 10 years. Right. If we give the other one from above, we'll show people that it was done from 1999 to 2010. To 2010. So that's right. 11 years, 6,000 patients. That's huge. And what they did was they checked the nicotine levels, which is called cotinine. We checked the nicotine levels in secondhand you know, exposure, people right. to smoke. And then we see what their body mass index is, what their blood sugars are, what their blood pressures are. And they, it, you get almost the same amount of nicotine that the smoker is smoking if you're in the direct vicinity of the smoker. And over a long period of time, that's going to add up. And not just the lipid 
profile, but also the glucose like tolerance. Yeah, we lipids, have glucose, body weight. I mean, you're going to experience all the ca cardiac disease, stroke. Right. So it's a, so, it's a prediction of like those yeah. stuff to happen in the future. Yep. For secondhand smokers. Secondhand smokers. I'm is trying not, to, is to not stress just in smoke. points. Like, yeah. Oh, is are people asking about it? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does make sense to get your loved one in the house to stop smoking. Okay. Especially if they're smoking in the house. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so الحقيقة أنا عايز الناس بقى تركز معايا جدا في النقطة الجاية. دراسة من أكبر الدراسات اللي اتعملت اتعملت تقريبا على 6000 مريض. Uh, اتعملت من سنة 99 ل 2010 يا ريت نهايلايت دي كمان 10 سنين الناس دي بتذاكر ايه اللي بيحصل للناس اللي حوالين المدخن بس هم ده كل هم الدراسة دي من 99 ل 2010 لمدة تقريبا 11 سنة بيذاكروا ايه اللي بيحصل للناس اللي حوالين المدخن ودي رسالتي لكل المدخنين من فضلك انت بتضر الناس اللي حواليك انت عايز تضر نفسك يعني انت حر بس ما تضرش الناس اللي حواليك الدراسه دي بتقول ايه زي ما انا قلت درسوا 6000 بيشنس لمده 11 سنه من سنه 99 ل 2010 لقوا ان الناس دي لما جينا نعمل لهم كميه الكوليسترول او يعني تحاليل الكوليسترول والدهون بشكل عام الدهون عندهم بتتزايد بشكل كتير جدا عن الناس البروفايل الطبيعي بتاعهم الحاجه الثانيه المهمه انه مش بس كده انه لقوا كمان الجلوكوز أو معدل السكر في الدم زي ما بنقول بيعلى جدا عن الطبيعي وبيبقى أبنورمال بشكل أو مش بشكل في النورمال رينج الطبيعي وبالتالي أنت مش بس أن أنت بتعمل لهم مشاكل في الدهون بتعمل لهم مشاكل بتخليهم كمان معرضين أن يجي لهم سكر ده الدراسة دي اتعملت للناس اللي حوالين المدخن بكرر الكلمة دي كتير جدا النهاردة فحضرتك مش بس بتضر نفسك ولكن بتضر اللي حواليك مهم جدا ان احنا نوري الناس المفاهيم دي الناس لازم تفهم انه الموضوع مش هزار التدخين يعني شيء سيء وزي ما انا قلت مش هسميه تدخين هسميه ادمان النيكوتين النهارده. So that's cigarettes and second hand smokers. What about marijuana? Because a lot of people they say oh I'm smoking marijuana just to put on some weight. My BMI is very low. Well, yeah, you had told me that before the show that that there in your country, you know, people are trying to gain weight because right. of Cannabis, right. well, that's interesting. They think the munchies can help them to put some like weight on. Well, you know, in the short run, they may be correct, but people who smoke cannabis for a long period of time are typically malnourished. They're typically sedentary. You don't see a lot of people smoking a joint and then going to the gym right. no. over time. You know, some people may think that that's <laughs> novel in the beginning, and especially with marijuana being legalized in this state now, right. anybody can get it over the age of 21. Uh, we're, we're, we're starting to see a lot of the long-term effects now, okay. and people are not, um, you know, people are actually losing weight, and they're getting sicker. Right. Yeah. So marijuana doesn't help to put weight on. Uh, I, in in the movies it does and and okay. in anecdotally you know you know in in conversation you would think it does but it actually in real world it doesn't. Yeah. And it's the gate opener for other drugs too. Marijuana is. Okay. Yeah. And so are cigarettes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, الحقيقة برضو الجزء النقطة المهمة اللي أنا عايزة أنا عايشها النهاردة وأكسرها عند الناس فكرة إنه المروانة الناس بتستخدمها عشان uh, تحط وزن أو, أو يعني تزيد في الوزن شوية النقطة دي غلط خالص الدراسات الجديدة بتقول إنه آه أنت بتبقى جعان شوية بعد ما تدخن مروانة أو بانجو في مصر عشان الناس بس تبقى فاهمة أنا بتكلم على إيه البانجو أو المروانة ولكن على اللونج ران أنت التغذية بتاعتك بتبقى سيئة جدا وعادة ان انت بتفقد وزن لانه التغذيه بتاعتك بتبقى مش سليمه ففكره الناس اللي بتستخدم مروانا عشان تحط وزن او تزيد في الوزن ده شيء صعب جدا. Now let's show people how bad the picture is through some statistics. Okay. Uh, when we talk about smoking coast and uh, the problem itself like statistics wise what can we tell them about that? Well I'll tell you what they what they spend on marketing. Um, billions of dollars a year because marketing does get people to smoke more. Uh, they're gearing smoking towards children, towards early adolescents, wow. which the e-cigarettes, it's no surprise. At first, the, the smoking industry was against e-cigarettes because they thought it would give them competition, but now they're finding that it's actually increasing. It sells business. more sometimes. It, 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 it does, even though more people are starting with e-cigarettes than with tobacco, but more people are entering the, the, the smoking you know, workforce. Uh, 
249 billion cigarettes were sold in the United States wow. in 2017. And smoking-related illnesses, that's either direct or indirect, cost the United States alone $300 billion every wow. year. So think about that. $300 billion. 700,000 people die from cigarettes. We talk about the opioid epidemic. We should talk about the cigarette epidemic, the right. tobacco epidemic. So you see it as in like coming epidemic, like after opiates and benzos and... Uh, I, I, I see it's, it's something important that we typically don't pay attention to. When, when we talk about longevity, when we talk about feeling healthy, when we, and we see how it's interacting with all other body systems. Right. I Statistics mean, are saying, too, between 18 to 24 percent of high schoolers, they're smokers now. So yeah. one out of four. But the good news is, is that 1965, I believe it was 56 percent of Americans over the age of 21 smoked. Now it's about 18 percent. Oh, so it went down. Mm -hmm. it, okay. it has. It has gone down significantly. Uh, and that was because of uh, cigarettes were not allowed to be advertised on radio or television and anti-smoking campaigns and actually little messages on the packets to right. tell you it's cancerous and could kill you. Those actually do work. I didn't. I, in Egypt, I, I don't think those little messages did anything because, oh, like, in, we in don't some, have accurate statistics. In some it. Scandinavian countries, they actually will put a huge picture on the back of the pack of a cancerous lung. Okay. Yeah, on and the that pack. might scare And people. supposedly, statistically, they say it does reduce smoking. Right. Uh, I want to remind you about some of the details, and what I told Dr. DeSanto at the time. Think about it in a country, like the United States of America, 249 million cigarettes that are sold in a year. In a country, 249 million. I want to also highlight the numbers so people can see them. آه كمان التكلفة بتاعة التدخين ودي أنا قلتها يمكن في الانترو أو في المقدمة 300 مليار دولار في سنة واحدة الحاجات دي بتكلف دولة واحدة زي الولايات المتحدة حركوا عارفين 300 مليار دولار يعني عشر أضعاف الاحتياطي النقدي في مصر تقريبا يعني تسع أضعاف عشان بس نبقى أكيرت 170 مليار دولار تقريبا بيروحوا على الـ 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 العلاج تكلفة العلاج من التدخين و156 مليار دولار طبعا الناس بتقعد في البيت ما تيجي بيحصل لها امراض في الجهاز الهضمي وبالتالي بنفقد انتاجيه سنويه تقريبا ده السلايد اللي بعدها الحقيقه زي ما انا كنت بكلم مع دكتور دي سانتو من 18 ل 24% تخيلوا حضراتكم من 18 ل 24% من الاطفال او من الشباب بتوع الهاي سكول عشان ما يزعلوش مني آه بيدخنوا آه كمان آه 9 من كل 10 تقريبا آه يعني تسعة من كل عشرة من الناس دي بتدخن عند سن 18 سنة فمهم جدا ان احنا نخلي بالنا من اولادنا الموضوع مش هزار الموضوع بيزيد جدا بين الشباب ولكن زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو هنا الناس اللي فوق 21 سنة ابتدوا يقلوا شوية في الادمان وللأسف ابتدى يزيد بين الشباب اللي اقل من 21 سنة so Let's scare people a little bit here. <laughs> we haven't already? <laughs> yeah, All we, right, well, let's go. Let's, let's go. scare them more then yeah. if it's like there's, you see there's, there's an uh, epidemic. I'm, I'm going to get to the end of the story. There's no, there's going to be no happy ending here. <laughs> okay. So just so you know that. Okay. Uh, so how many death per, like some numbers about um, uh, like the smoking effect, how many death per year, the effects for those uh, In 2015, um, 500,000 deaths directly related in the United States, directly wow. related. Just in the United States. Seven million deaths around the country. Wow. I mean, I'm sorry, around the world. Okay. So that means more than half a million just direct effect from smoking, cigarettes. Uh, more than, correct, in right. this country, okay. in the United States. And the effect on the other, like, systems in the body, like heart and all that. So, stuff. obviously, lungs, we're dealing with emphysema and we're dealing with lung cancer. All right, both of those shortened lives, obviously. Right. Uh, lung cancer is the number one killer amongst men and women. Right. Uh, above the, uh, above a certain, no, actually all comers. Uh, heart disease, it causes heart disease. It breaks down blood vessels in the heart, causes heart blockage. Clog them up. Clogging of coronary arteries, clogging of cerebral brain arteries, causing stroke. Um, and some cancers other than lung cancer are direct, directly related, like thyroid cancer and bladder cancer. Okay. آه عايزين نخوف حضراتكم شويه زي ما قلنا زي ما شايفين حضراتكم الارقام اللي موجوده على الشاشه تقريبا 480 الف حاله وفاه كل سنه في الولايات المتحده الامريكيه بسبب تدخين السجاير دايركت حول العالم زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو تقريبا حوالي 700 الف يعني تقريبا كل سنه بيموت حوالي 3 4 مليون شخص 
ده دايركت افكت او تاثير مباشر من تدخين السجاير الاسباب كمان او المشاكل اللي بتسببها 29% من حالات الوفاه دي بيبقى بسبب اللنج كانسر آه 33% بيبقى بسبب مشاكل بت بتحصل آه اللنج كانسر اللي هو سرطان الرئه آه الهارت ديزيز او مشاكل القلب او السكتات القلبيه بتحصل تقريبا 33% بيحصل جلطات دماغيه 3% آه بيحصل مشاكل في الرئه السي او بي دي الحويصلات الهوائيه نفسها بتتكسر وبيحصل انفزيما وبتبقى اللنج بتاعتك غير قادره على التنفس فبتبقى مشكله كبيره جدا يونج مان اريكتال ديسفانكشن So Aha. that's a very important topic. Extremely important. Right. That's probably the second reason why people come see me in my as practice. As soon as you start touching this this point, a lot of people like don't think about it. I think if men between the ages of 18 and 65 understood what kind of damage smoking will do to blood vessels. So smoking um, activates your adrenal glands and that causes the release of adrenaline throughout your whole system. That goes to blood vessels and blood vessels over time constrict expand, constrict, expand, and they become blocked. They attract cholesterol, they attract platelets. Guess what? You've got blood vessels that lead to your genitals, your penis. Right. Uh, if you cannot get enough blood flow, that is going to immediately cause erectile dysfunction. Right. And over time, people who start experiencing erectile dysfunction, that could be a precursor or a harbinger for future cardiac events, okay. like a heart attack. So that's how important it is. So it's not just affecting your sex life, it could indicate that something serious it is, is going on. It could end your life, work. like through a heart attack. Exactly, but the good news is, is that if you stop, your erectile function could come back within within a few days. Okay, I've not yeah, that's my question. Yeah. Is it reversible condition? Absolutely. Okay. So. Absolutely. Yeah. It, that's that's the good news for you. Yeah. And, and like I mean, th there are other things. If you've got, if you're diabetic and high blood pressure, and those aren't under control, you know, obviously that's going to cause damage to blood vessels. Also, so you, you have to look at the whole picture. But yes, if it's just you're just looking at smoking and you stop smoking, erectile function will improve. And it has <coughs> direct relations to some cancers like pancreatic uh, bladder cancer, mm -hmm. the pancreatic bladder, lung obviously cancer. the head and neck, the lung cancer, you Throat know, and number everything. one. Um, especially if you chew tobacco. I know we're talking about cigarette smoking, right. but people who chew tobacco are almost guaranteed if they continue throughout their whole life to getting some kind of cancer on the tongue, on the lips, back of the throat, also the esophagus. So smokeless, it's not about just the smoke. Tobacco itself as a material is bad. Correct. Okay. Any, any contact, any irritant. Okay. It's more the irritational effects, yeah. Um, هنا صورة مهمة جدا وعايز اركز على نقطة هنا مهمة مش بس تدخين السجاير ولكن الناس اللي بتاكل طباقه كمان ده بيسبب كانسر في, في, في كل مناطق البق وفي البلعوم كمان ده, ده مهم جدا ان احنا نبقى فاهمينه بتسبب سرطان في الرئة زي ما انا قلت بتسبب ضيق في الاوعية الدموية بشكل عام ومن نقطة ضيق في الاوعية الدموية دي اتكلمنا على فكرة مشاكل الانتصاب عن شباب كتير جدا في سن صغير يعني ما كناش بنشوفها قبل كده ولكن دلوقتي شباب كتير جدا يمكن من فوق ال 18 سنه بيجوا بالمشكله دي مشاكل ضعف في الانتصاب او عدم القدره على الانتصاب خالص بتبقى فيها مشكله جامده جدا للشباب وزي ما انا قلت ابتدينا بنشوفها في شباب صغير زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو تدخين له علاقه مباشره فلو سمحت كل الشباب اللي بيسمعني النهارده وفي اللي بعت لي على الفيسبوك آه زي ما انا قلت لحضرتك في ناس كتير قوي بعتها بتتكلم على مشاكل الانتصاب مع التدخين الـ الـ الخبر الكويس انه الخبر السيء انه التدخين له علاقه بمشاكل الانتصاب عند الرجال بالذات الخبر الكويس ان الموضوع ريفرسبل فممكن لو حضرتك وقفت تدخين الموضوع يتحسن شويه على اللونج ران فده شيء مهم جدا ان حضراتكم تبقوا عارفينه حاجه ثانيه مهمه جدا يا ريت برضه نحط السلايد اللي هي التاثير بتاع التدخين على الشاشه التدخين له علاقة بأنواع كتيرة جدا من الكانسرز زي ما احنا قلنا الكانسر بتاع الرئة أو سرطان الرئة ده مهم جدا سرطان المثانة آه والحقيقة ده من الحاجات المهمة جدا اللي بي أو المشاكل الكبيرة جدا اللي بيسببها التدخين سرطان المثانة البولية لأنه كل الكيميكالز الموجودة في التدخين بتنزل مع البول وبتفضل في المثانة لفترة طويلة فده بيأثر على المثانة بشكل كبير جدا 
سرطان الجهاز التنفسي بكل انواعه طبعا ده يعني معروف جدا وفي علاقه مباشره مع التدخين بشكل عام دي لازم نبقى فاهمينها بشكل كبير جدا امراض كتيره جدا بتحصل يا ريت حضراتكم يعني انا بس مش عايز ادخل فيها كتير لانه انا عايز اركز كمان على العلاج لانه ده ناس كتيره قوي بعتها بتتكلم على انواع العلاج اللي موجوده ففعلا مشاكل كتيره قوي ليها علاقه بالتدخين زي ما انا قلت هنستنى كل تليفونات حضراتكم هبص في البريك هناخد بريك دلوقتي هبص على الاسئله اللي جات لنا على الفيسبوك هنحاول نجاوبها في الفقرات اللي جايه آه ولو حضراتكم عايزين تسالوا اي اسئله مباشره لضيفنا النهارده تقدروا تكلمونا على الارقام اللي هتبقى موجوده على الشاشه هنستنى تليفونات حضراتكم هنطلع بريك ونرجع تاني بعد الفاصل نكمل اهلا بحضراتكم مره ثانيه الحقيقه انا بصيت على معظم الاسئله اللي جايه لنا على الفيسبوك كانت بتتكلم على الشيشه عن الفيب واهم الاسئله جايه عن ال 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 ان احنا ازاي نبطل تدخين معظم الاسئله جايه ايه هي الميديكي الادويه اللي موجوده في السوق الاعراض الجانبيه التكلفه كل الاسئله دي هنجاوبها في الفقره الجايه بدل ما نجاوب سؤال بسؤال تقريبا انا هجاوب كل الاسئله اللي جت على الصفحه مره واحده خلال ده لان احنا عملنا زي تجميع عليها So we scared people. So let's give them some hope. <laughs> so whoever's left watching. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's give them some hope. Like when I stop smoking, what happened to my body? Like to my systems? Oh, the uh, immediate, I mean, almost immediately your body starts to recover. It, okay. Immediately. Your body wants to recover. Okay. I mean, you're, so, so think about this. When you, when you smoke, your blood pressure goes through the roof. And I have patients that actually smoke a cigarette before I take their blood pressures. And their blood pressures are that of like a 70 year or an 80 year old. Wow. So yes, it does cause immediate changes, but when you stop, so 20 minutes your blood pressure returns to normal. That's typically okay. the, first, um, the first benefit. 
Around eight hours later, you'll see the oxygen levels and the oxygen diffusion capacity of the lungs to start to come back to come back to you and know, we can see start this to recover. The I shouldn't say come back to normal. Something. What did you say? The pulse ox. Like usually, if people have those like kind of digital machines to show oxygen saturation. Yeah, if if you have a pulse ox machine at home, some people do. Put it on your finger, smoke a cigarette, and and see where the numbers go. Okay. They're, they're probably go down to about 94, 95 percent. We see those numbers in patients who have emphysema long term. Wow. So that's pretty significant. Carbon monoxide levels in the lungs and the blood after 24 hours um, return to normal. The return to normal after 24 hours. Yes. Okay. After 48 hours, and this, this varies for, you know, how long people have been smoking and for how much they've been smoking, you'll notice after 48 hours to one week that your breathing starts to become easier. That's the time you should go out and start replacing bad habits with good habits. Right. Now, significantly, after 2 to 12 weeks, circulation improves, and we can tell that by, you know, blood flow to the blood vessels in the, in the hands and the feet. And after five years, your risk of heart attack goes down to um, half of that as a smoker. That's and great. after 10 years, this is the most significant one. You, after 10 years, any type of smoker goes back to having a, a, the same percent of getting lung cancer as a non-smoker. Normal 10 person. years. That's, that's not bad that's for what you've done to your body. Of course. 10 years, it's giving you your life back. So God is giving you another chance to <laughs> stop and like start over, Absolutely. basically. Yeah. الحقيقة برضو من الحاجات المهمة جدا 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 اللي هتكلم عليها النهاردة واللي بتدي شوية أمل تعالوا نشوف مع بعض لما حضرتك بتتوقع قررت النهاردة تتوقف عن التدخين إيه اللي هيحصل في جسمك عشرين دقيقة فقط من قرار التوقف ده البلاب بريشر بتاعك أو ضغطك هيرجع لمعدلاته الطبيعية زي ما قال دكتور ديسانتو عنده بيشوف البيشنس لسه مدخن سجارة وبيشوفه هو في الأوفيس أو في العيادة بيلاقي أن ضغطه already أعلى من الطبيعي لو وقفت 20 دقيقة ضغطك بيرجع تقريبا للمعدلات الطبيعية. ثمان ساعات كمية الأكسجين في جسمك ودي حاجة من المهمة جدا إنه عايز أقول للناس اللي بتقول إن أنت طول ما بتدخن طول ما وزنك كويس، لا أنت كمية الأكسجين في جسمك بتقل وبالتالي معدلات الحرق بتقل آه وبالتالي ما بتحرقش كفاية فبتزيد وزن مع التدخين مش العكس ودي نقطة اتكلمنا عليها في البداية. 24 ساعة كمية أول أكسيد الكربون بترجع تاني طبيعية في جسمك أو بترجع للنورمال ليفل 48 ساعة بيبتدي تنفسك يبتدي يتحسن من أسبوعين ل 12 أسبوع الدورة الدموية بتتحسن في كل جسمك بعد خمس سنين المعدلات بتاعة إصابتك بالنوبات القلبية أو الهارت أتاكس يعني تقريبا بترجع بتقل للنص وبعد عشر سنين آه ان انت يجي لك لانج كانسر او سرطان رئه بترجع تاني زي الانسان الطبيعي عندكم نفس التشانسز او الفرص ان يجي لكم لانج كانسر بتنزل بشكل كبير جدا كانك ما دخنتش قبل كده لو وانت حضرتك متوقف عن التدخين لمده عشر سنين فرصه كبيره تعالوا نستغلها وفي نفس الوقت تعالوا نقول ازاي نبطل لانه بالنسبه لي دي الفقره الذهبيه في الحلقه النهارده ان احنا نوري حضراتكم الادويه وازاي تقدر تبطل وازاي يبقى عندك كمان السبورت اللي حواليك اللي يخليك يقدر يساعدك على ده. So now one of the most important decisions in any smoker's life is to decide to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, like how they make the decision, what they should think of, first of all, and um, the coping skills, how they cut the pairing between their coping skills, because most of the smokers, their coping skills is the cigarette itself. Mm -hmm. So what we tell them about the decision, how to take the decision, and the coping strategies that they can use before we talk about the medications, of course. Sure. Uh, the, the first thing you should begin to tell yourself is, do you want to ask yourself is, do you want to be a non-smoker? Do you want to consider yourself a non-smoker? And then start telling yourself that you're a non-smoker. Why are you smoking? That's typically the be that's, that's how I apply that with my patients. I'm a non-smoker. Why do? Why am I still smoking? Right. It just. It doesn't make. It doesn't make sense. Embedded in their brain that you're right. a non-smoker. Now, the first question we had is: Is it addictive or is it a habit? It's both, and we need to approach it from two ways. The addictive qualities. Okay, so you're going to have somebody who is now addicted to a substance who's giving their their. It's giving their body what they need every couple of minutes, or depending on how how often they smoke, on a regular basis. And once they stop doing that, the amount of dopamine that is, goes down, 
the amount of adrenaline that they're typically used to goes down. So what does that look like? That looks like decreased alertness. That looks like um, irritation, irritability. You've been around somebody who's tried to of quit course. smoking. Um, they're typically irritable for at least three or four days, but that's how long a nicotine addiction lasts. So we need to let them pass the first lasts. three, four days. For three or four days and you're done. Okay. I mean, compared, compared to the withdrawal symptoms of other drugs, even other prescription drugs like SSRIs, Quitting nicotine is nothing. I mean, okay. on the scale of, of zero to 10, it's, you know, a two or a three. And we, we make it a lot harder than it actually is. So the easiest kind to quit of substance abuse is nicotine. As far as withdrawal symptoms. Okay. Now, relative quit, to other drugs. Quitting rates, now that's a different story. <laughs> okay. It's, you know, 75% of smokers who smoke want to quit. And that's the interesting thing. So 2% are successful. We as do, we as do, yeah, 2% are successful. But we as doctors, need to have exposure to the people who want to quit. Right. They have to be able to tell us that they smoke because most people are ashamed and they usually play it down. Right. And, uh, and then we want to address it as a dependence addiction and also as a coping mechanism, social habit. So we need to employ other things other than the medical side of it. We'll right. talk about the medications later. Right. And those are actually the most successful ways to quit. So right. if, you're, if you're looking to quit, definitely speak with your doctor. Um, but we also start. Need, we we also need to um, start employing ways to change their daily habits, like find out when they smoke their cigarettes, find out which cigarettes are habitual cigarettes, okay. and which cigarettes are. Because um, we keep saying quit, quit, quit. Uh huh. How to create a quit plan? That's that's the main, like thing. How to create like a quit plan? Like today I want to quit. So what what should I do in the steps? Um, okay. So today I want to quit. Uh, I want to make an appointment with my doctor because I know I'm going to have the best chances of quitting if I if I give him a of him or her a call and make an appointment when we, we we come up with a plan. I'm going to have to take a good look at and even keep a diary. So maybe it might take a couple of days. If you're ready to quit, you can cut down a little bit. So it's always easier to stop a little bit of a drug than a lot of a drug. So you cut down, you start slowly bringing in healthy habits, which aren't as fun as bad habits, right. but to start bringing them in. So you're not dealing with the negative effects. We know what smoking, quitting smoking is going to cost. Yeah, you are going to get an average of five to 10 pounds weight gain if you don't do anything. But if you employ good nutrition and if you employ exercise the minute you stop smoking, you're not going to gain the five to 10 pounds. Okay. In fact, you may start losing it because you feel better and you're going to start going to the gym every right. day. And you're more active, of course. Right. Uh, so creating a quit plan, first of all, we set a quit date. Quit date, uh, very important. Okay, um, the nearest as possible, or today, or now? To, to the nearest as possible, <laughs> but, but also when you're dealing with someone with an addiction, you also don't wanna, you don't wanna interfere too early if they're not ready, because then you're gonna have negative consequences if you try to Relapse. talk somebody into quitting something. Right. I found that, in, especially in addiction medicine, if somebody's not ready to quit something, they're not gonna quit it. So as much as you said, but you do have an effect. You have slow effects. So every, in, every interaction you have with your patient, you can get them to start thinking about it. Getting from the pre-contemplative phase where they're th almost thinking about it to, to really the thinking about it. consequences to the contemplation stage. Right. Talk, have them come to you saying, oh, wow, this is really affecting the way I can play with my kids because I have to stop and rest. I'm not going to the gym. I'm not fitting into my clothes. I didn't get that promotion at work because I don't feel good about myself. And all of these things bleed into each other. So you have to have, get people to recognize that. So if you can start thinking about those things, that would definitely make a difference. Uh, but a quit date. And also, if you, if you relapse and you start smoking after your quit date, don't be hard on yourself. Okay. okay. Most people relapse when they try to quit smoking. Actually, statistics are saying people get become successful after at least three or four trials. Mm -hmm. So, so it's it's very important to forgive yourself and start over um, if you relapsed, like and you like you start smoking back. I agree. I agree with that statistic. It probably takes about three or four times. So go easy on yourself if it's your first time and you pick up a cigarette. You know, we're human. Right. We're human <laughs> beings. Yeah. <laughs> كانت نصايح رائعه جدا 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 من دكتور ديسانتو آه ازاي اعمل خطه عشان انا لو عايز ابطل سجاير القصه محتاجه خطه رقم واحد حط آه تاريخ او يوم انت مش هتدخن بعد اليوم ده بعد ما تحط التاريخ ده مهم جدا ان انت تحضر نفسك ان انت تفهم ايه هي 
اعراض انسحاب النيكوتين من جسمك لانه زي ما انا قلنا خلاص مفيش مش تدخين هو ادمان للنيكوتين فكل ادمان له اعراض انسحاب زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو الخبر الكويس النهارده انه اسهل اسهل حاجه ممكن تبطلها هي السجاير انا مش بقول ان هو ده قرار سهل ولكن اسهل بالنسبه للمشاكل الادمان الثانيه او انواع الادمان الثانيه الكحوليات والمناومات والهيروين والكوكايين والكلام ده اسهل نوع تقدر تبطله في ده كله هو السجاير قصه كلها 3 ل 4 ايام وده زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو 3 ل 4 ايام اعراض انسحاب هتتعامل معاها ومفيش اكتر من كده فرقم واحد نحط تاريخ خطه ان احنا نحط تاريخ رقم اثنين ان انا اعرف اي اعراض انسحاب هتعامل معاها وده بيعتمد طبعا على كام علبه سجاير وبقالك قد ايه بتدخن الحاجه الثالثه انه لو انت محتاج ميديكيشن او محتاج ادويه تساعدك على ده ممكن ان انت تعمل ده حاجه تانية مهمه جدا ان احنا ممكن لازم نعمل ريبليسمنت للعادات اللي كنا بنعملها مع التدخين اذا احنا كنا بندخن بعد الاكل مهم جدا ابقى فاهم انه ابدل القصه دي او اقطع العلاقه ما بين الاكل والتدخين اذا انا بدخن وانا سايق ما احطش علبه سجاير في العربيه خالص لانه اذا هي دي العاده اللي بتخليك تدخن ان انت بتدخن وانت سايق باستمرار قرر ان انت ما فيش علبه سجاير في العربيه بديله فلو انت ما معكش علبه سجاير ما فيش علبه سجاير حواليك وما توقفش طبعا عشان تجيب علبه سجاير يعني ايه مش مش هنستعبط يعني <تصفيق> الحاجه الثالثه المهمه المه... جدا انه لازم تقعد مع نفسك تكتب لسته ايه المشاكل الصحيه اللي حصلت لك ايه الاعراض او المشاكل اللي انت ممكن تتعرض لها في المستقبل لو فضلت تدخن ايه المشاكل اللي حواليك هيتعرضوا لها او اسرتك هتتعرض لها لانه ده مهم جدا ان انت زي ما قلت لحضراتكم في البدايه انت مش بس بتاثر على نفسك ولكن بتاثر على اسرتك بالكامل الحاجه الرابعه كمان ان احنا لازم نفهمها ايه هي اعراض الانسحاب زي ما قال دكتور دي سانتو شويه اريتابيلتي ان انت تبقى عصبي شويه في البدايه او احيانا الناس بتبقى قلقانه جدا ان انا مش هدخن تاني مش مش هرجع لماده النيكوتين اللي انا حصل لي عليها تعود تاني حاجه تانيه مهمه ان احنا نقطع كمان لو انت كنت بتدخن مع ناس معينه مش لازم اقابلهم خالص دلوقتي لحد ما حضرتك تبطل تدخين نقطة مهمة جدا ان انت اتس اوكي okay ان انت تسامح نفسك لو رجعت للتدخين. آه يعني ايه؟ يعني ان انت الناس عادة بتاخد من ثلاث لاربع مرات عشان تبطل محاولات ناجحة. 75% من الناس عايزين يبطلوا 2% اللي بينجحوا ده قابل للزيادة لو لو عند حضرتك الإرادة ان انت تبطل. So when we talk about coping strategies the five Ds, what we can tell them about the five Ds and uh, the app that can help like on the phone, some apps now since our life turn it to be some apps and some technologies and stuff. Mm -hmm. So coping there, strategies, 5Ds and that. Cope, so we talked about, medic, you know, we're going to talk about medication, so we have to talk about the social aspect of right. it. So what are we going to do when we're actually faced with really wanting a cigarette and having that internal fight with yourself? Right. So um, the 5Ds, this is really important. So delay. Know that most cravings last for five minutes. I've got a sand hourglass timer on my desk at okay. work. That I, it's That's a five-minute really timer. Yeah. I go and when my patients are sitting there, I flip it over, and then when the sand runs out, I go. That's how long it takes for your craving to go away before your brain is on to the next thought. Wow. So just know that. So delay, distract, keep putting it Do out. Say so you else. know what? I'm going to have a cigarette later. I'm mm -hmm. not going to have it now. I'm going to save one for later. You know, that's, that's how a lot of alcoholics stop drinking, one day at a time. Uh, okay. I'll drink tomorrow, but I won't drink today. Okay. So that's, that's also drinking plenty of water. Water does a few things. First of all, you can mistake in, um, hunger and thirst for cravings for drugs and alcohol. Right. Remember that. So Because make sure the stomach receptors doesn't recognize what, stretch it. It doesn't. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes if, if you drink enough water, or, or if you have a, you know, you maybe have a snack, a healthy snack, you can start releasing chemicals in your brain that actually will... Um, blocks the hunger center. Or... Blo blocks the hunger center and reduce the cravings for, the immediate cravings for the cigarette. Deep breathing, I employ that with, with every one of my patients. Some of the rel uh, relaxation techniques. Relaxation. I mean, even even my my Apple Watch has a breathe app that reminds me to breathe. Like I need to be reminded to breathe, but it's actually a um, a, a, a lead breathing session for five minutes, where you you know, six seconds inspiration, twelve seconds expiration, in and out. So develop a kind of breathing pattern. 
It is so relaxing, and it is very, very underrated in, in, in reducing cravings. Six seconds in inspiration and six seconds mm -hmm. in expiration. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you get better, you can, you can prolong the inspiration and prolong the expiration. Okay. So five of these. Uh-huh. Uh, as I said, Dr. DeSanto, if you want to change the coping strategies, or what we call it, it's a change with the situation. If you want to قررت ان انت تبطل وعايز تدخن تاني دلوقتي، رقم واحد اخر القرار ده شويه، الخمسه ديز اللي بيبتدوا بحرف الدي يعني، رقم واحد اللي هو الديلي اخر القرار ده شويه، هدخن كمان شويه. زي ما قال دكتور ديسانتو اكتر حاجه اكتر فكره للريلابس او ان انت ترجع تدخن بتاخد خمس دقائق على الاكتر، لو عديت الخمس دقائق دول عدت القصه كلها اللي بتزن في دماغك وعايزه ترجعك تدخن. هو جايب حاجة زي الرمل بتاع إزاز كده فيها رمل من بيقلبها بتاخد خمس دقايق على ما الرمل ده بينزل من واحدة لواحدة عشان كده بيعدي الخمس دقايق دول كده فده مهم جدا وبيوري البيشنس إزاي الخمس دقايق دول بيعدوا من فضلك أخر القرار دي ليه؟ رقم اتنين ديستراكت إن أنت يعني فكر في حاجات تانية تعملها غير إن أنت تدخن أو هأجل ده شوية وأفكر في أي حاجة تانية رقم ثلاثة وده المهم جدا لكل اللي خدوا قرار ان هم يبطلوا من فضل حضرتك اشرب كميات مرة كتير جدا في اليوم لانه ده بيساعد جدا ان انت ما ترجعش تاني لفكرة التدخين رابع نقطة اللي هي بنسميها الديب بريذنج او الريلاكسيشن او الاسترخاء ودي ودي وحاجة من حاجات الاسترخاء ان انت تتنفس بعمق شديد جدا تاخد نفس ان لمدة ست ثواني six seconds right <تصفيق> ست ثواني خد نفس عميق ست ثواني وطلعه في ست ثواني. الموضوع ده لو عملته لمده دقيقتين هتبقى ريلاكس جدا وحضراتكم جربوها صدقوني كويسه جدا حتى في الاسترس. بنقول للناس كده قاعده الست ثواني خد نفس في ست ثواني وطلعه في ست ثواني لمده دقيقتين هتلاقي نفسك مهما كنت متوتر وفي حاجه بتزن ان انت لازم تروح تدخن دلوقتي هتلاقي نفسك هديت تماما وده شيء مهم جدا جدا. What about the social support network? How important that is? And I'm talking now to the family of the smoker. So social support network around the smoker, how it's important. Good, good, good topic. Um, obviously, the alcoholic is going to get better when nobody's drinking in the house. It's the, they're right. going to have less, uh, less of a chance of relapsing. Same thing with smokers. It's good if a couple smokes that they quit together. Their chances of, of, of staying quit are 40, 50 percent greater. Okay. than if only one quits because you've got those visual cues. Right. Social support. You want to get the support of, of past smokers. There's 12-step groups like Alcoholics Anonymous. There's Nicotine and Tobacco Anonymous. Okay. They still do have those groups, especially in Southern California. We have a group for everything in Southern California. Okay. Um, there's apps, and you had mentioned that app. Um, right. So what apps do you can use now? Uh, I think... Uh, let's go to that slide. Can we put that slide up? Yeah. It's called Quit, Quit Start. Start. Yeah. Yeah, it's like having your it's like having your your qu smoke uh, quitting um, coach on an app, right? You know, and like it, tour guide, like it, how we're gonna go through this. Basically, and it's going to hold your hand. It's gonna let you know what kind of um, what kind of symptoms you're gonna have. Distracts you with cra with um, distracts the cravings with games and challenges, um, and helpful hints. See, that's they're doing the five Ds for you. To make your life easier. It is. And sometimes we need uh, an app or a list of things to tell us what to do. And it's just, it, it makes it so much easier. That's our life now, a bunch of apps. That's, I, that's how I, I hate to say it, but yeah, <laughs> we are, we are app, uh, app centric <laughs> right. generation, unfortunately. So it helps you to distract you and help you to quit and give you information about uh, withdrawal and stuff. Yeah. Okay. الاب ده مهم جدا وحضراتكم ركزوا معايا كل المدخنين في اب يا ريت نطلعه تاني على الشاشه اسمه كويت ستارت وانا حاطط صوره لي للاب على الـ 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 على التليفون اسمه كويت ستارت الاب ده اولا بيساعد حضرتك الخمسه ديز اللي احنا شرحناهم من شويه الاب ده بيعملهم لك عشان يخلي حياتك اسهل رقم واحد انه بيحضرك وبيقول لك دي اعراض الانسحاب اللي انت هتشوفها كمان مهم جدا انه آه بي بيعمل لك ديستراكشن عمليه الديستراكشن او ان هو في شويه جيمز وبتاع فعلى بال ما الخمس دقائق اللي اتكلمنا بتوع الزن ان انت ترجع تاني تدخن على ما الخمس دقائق دول يعدوا الدنيا هتبقى افضل وهم هيدستراكت يو سم جيمز وانس ان انت تقول انا هبتدي ويدرول بي بي بيعلموك ازاي تعدي آه مرحله الـ الـ الاعراض الانسحاب دي وتفكر في حاجه مختلفه 
اب رائع 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 اسمه كويت ستارت يا ريت كل المدخنين ينزلوه على التليفون بتاعهم النهارده one of the like most important tools besides social support network can i do the decision that's the app on the phone mm -hmm. that's how it looks it's uh, great uh, so one of the most important tools beside the apps and uh, the quit plan and all that stuff is medication people need medication so what are the medication available how can we use them side effects cost and all that stuff well We've got seven approved medications. Five are in the nicotine family, and two are prescription medications that are indicated to help people quit smoking. Um, nicotine replacement, believe it or not, is, is actually works. Works, and th there's there's a myth out there that oh, I'm just going to quit cold turkey. I, I mean, that's probably going to give your least six, least rate of success to quit smoking okay. is cold turkey. I have a question: Is mm -hmm. there any clear cut or fine line? If I need medication or no, or anybody like if I'm if I'm smoking just two three cigarettes a day, five cigarettes a day, ten cigarettes a day, is there a clear cut when can I use medication or well if you've I'm been smoking stop five, five cigarettes a day for fifty years that's a pretty significant amount. Right. I mean if you want to quit and you want help, you, you you let me know, you let a physician know, and we'll sit down and we'll come up with a plan. Uh, you know, th there, there's no set line in the sand, but, okay. you know, if you're smoking a few cigarettes a day, it should, on, on, you know, on paper, should be easier for you to quit two That's cigarettes a day. just one of the questions here, like oh, oh, one of the audience smoking three cigarettes a day Oh wow! Okay. for 12 years, does he, he's asking, do I need medication or no? So. My question <laughs> to him is, A, does he want to quit? Let's assume he wants to quit smoking. That, that, and he can't do it on his own, yes, that's why he's coming to see me, and I would recommend a short course of medication. Okay. That's going to increase his chances. That's going to, it's, it's going to, you know, get us to the end point that both he and I want. Okay. So, yes, the answer is yes. Okay. At least discuss it with your doctor. Discuss it, yeah. okay. So the five nicotine uh, uh, substitutes, does anyone have better, uh, like, results than the other? Like, do you recommend one over the other? There, there are five. The one that actually gives you the best results in the nicotine family mm -hmm. is super expensive and super painful to use. And I'm not sure we, I don't prescribe it, uh, and we don't use it too much in the United States, but I hear it's still around. It's a nicotine nasal spray. And so you don't recommend that one? Oh, it's horrible. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've actually tried it. It, it burns. Um, and there's easier ways to get nicotine into your body. So what's the easier ways? Uh, the, the easier ways are the, the next level of success is you're going to get with an inhaler, okay? okay. That, so that's going to mimic, mimic smoking, but, but it's not a vape. It's just something where you pass air through uh, a nicotine-infused filter. So you get your nicotine that way. Then there's gum, lozenge, uh, and those are effective. And obviously the patch is what we use the most. Okay. So if you smoke more than 10 cigarettes a day, I recommend... Uh, a patch of 14 milligrams. Pat nicotine patches come in three strengths, 21, 14, and 7 milligrams. 7 milligrams is never indicated to start. So you either start at 21 or 14. Or 14. More than 10 cigarettes a day. Or if you have your first cigarette before five minutes at the, the beginning of the day, that's also a good question, is ask yourself, when do you have your first cigarette of the morning? Okay. If you can wait one to two hours, you're not a serious smoker. Oh, um, that's, a, that's a very good it's, point. It's, it's, in, it's interesting, and you may not need the higher strength. Right. You know, it doesn't mean you shouldn't quit, but it means that you may, you may be in a different class of smoker. Um, the patches, you should start, if you smoke more than 10 cigarettes a day, you should start at 21 milligrams. If you smoke less than 10, you start at 14 milligrams, and that's indicated for two weeks. So, so your, your quit plan should usually involve about a month. Uh, of, of cutting down to almost zero. You mentioned gums, and I have a question here mm -hmm. on White Coat Page. Uh, does regular gum help, like not the nicotine gum? Uh, regular gum helps if you're a very oral, orally fixated person. So if you have a pen in your mouth, if, if you find, that's why I have people write diaries of when, what, they, what the cigarette means to them. Does it mean it's keeping their mouth busy? Does it mean, oh, it's something I could do when I hang out? Is it a break between periods of work? So... Yeah, gum will break the habit if you're orally fixated. It can take care of that habitual part of it. Regular gum, obviously, <laughs> is not going to do anything for the nicotine, but yeah. The truth is a great story, because as the doctor DeSanto said, he asked himself a question. The question is, if you can't be able to 
لساعتين قبل امتى تسال نفسك امتى بتاخد او بتشرب اول سيجاره في اليوم لو حضرتك اول ما بتصحى من النوم بتقدر تصبر ساعه او ساعتين على ما توصل لاول سيجاره فده معناه انه حضرتك مش سيريس سموكر يعني مش مش سموكر جامد قوي والاقلاع سهل جدا الحاجه الثانيه المهمه جدا حضرتك بتدخن كام سيجاره في اليوم وبناء على كده بنحدد انواع الدواء انواع الدواء في خمس ادويه بتبدل النيكوتين في جسمك اهمهم على الاطلاق اللاصق الطبي في منهم النيزل سبراي او الرش في الانف الانهيلر بتاخده بالبق وفي الجام اللي بان وفي اللازنجز اللي حضرتك بتحطها جوه بقك الخمس حاجات دول بيبدلوا النيكوتين لو حضرتك بتاخد اكتر من 10 سجاير في اليوم بتبتدي بالباتشز وتقريبا بتاخد 21 في منها ثلاث ثلاثه سترينث 21 و14 و7 بتاخد اكتر من 10 بتبتدي بال21 ملي جرام اكتر من اقل من ال10 بتبتدي ب14 بس عمرك ما تبتدي اقل من 14 وبعدين تنزل لسبعه وبعدين اللاصق ده بيخليك تقدر تبطل وات اذر نون نيكوتين سبستيتيوتس وي وي هاف تو بريسكريبشن تو بريسكريبشن ميديكيشنز ذات ار اكشلي جيفز يو ذا جريتست تشانس اوف سكسس ذا فيرست ون از Shantix. Uh, is, is Shantix, actually, I was going to talk about what will be utrin first. Yeah, Shantix yeah. gives you, uh, uh, let's start with Shantix. Shantix is a, a nicotine receptor uh, um, blocker, or something. blocker and activator at the same time. What it does is it blocks the ability of, nat of nicotine that you take in from a cigarette to affect the nicotine receptors in the brain. So what you're doing is, is you're blocking, is that you're blocking um, uh, the ability for each cigarette to give you that high. Okay. So you're not experiencing any of the brain changes from smoking cigarettes, and you're experiencing all the negative consequences, the lousy taste, the rest, the breathing difficulties, and Welbutrin. Okay. Bupropion is the, is the generic name for it. Preference and, for one over the other? Um, it depends on, you know, it depends on if a person um, has... Um, is averse to vivid dreams, you know, the side effects of each of each yeah, of the that, medications. A, that was my yeah. side effects versus contraindications. Sh uh, Shantix, uh, you want to be careful in people with seizure disorders. Also, Wellbutrin, you want to be careful in people with seizure disorders. Um, you, you want, are the, is the patient depressed? They would benefit from a little bit of Wellbutrin in addition to the anti-smoking effects. Shantix, you can actually smoke while you're taking it and it's indicated for a one month plan. So okay. it depends. Shantix will give you the greatest success so you in smoking and quitting smoking. Okay. فقلنا الخمس قلنا بما ان احنا قلنا انه في خمس حاجات بتبدل النيكوتين في جسمك شرحناهم في نوعين ادويه مهمين جدا والبيتشن بيساعدك دكتور دي سانتو قال لو انت عندك اي نوع من انواع السيجرز او اللي هم بنسميه السرع او الموجات الكهربائيه الزايده في مخك ما بنحبش نستخدم الوالبيتشن لانه ما بيساعدش كتير اللي رائع وهو بيعمله ريكومنديشن كبير جدا ده اسمه شانتكس والشانتكس بيساعد جدا ان انت تبطل تدخين كمان الشانتكس في ميزه آه كويسه جدا ان هو ممكن تدخن عليه الفترة لمده اسبوع وبعد كده هتلاقي نفسك مش محتاج السجاير في اي حاجه فهتقدر تبطل بسهوله جدا آه حاجه اخيره عايز اقولها لحضراتكم الشانتكس ما بيتاخدش مع الناس اللي عندهم ديبريشن او اكتئاب ما بيفضلش ان احنا آه نستخدمه معاهم One last message to the audience, uh, the smokers. What would you tell them today? Uh, to, to be able to quit? Yeah. So if you're, if you're currently a smoker and you don't want to quit, then don't try to quit yet. Okay. You will obviously not be successful. But if you do want to quit, you're not ready to quit completely, then do things to cut down. Then when you are ready to quit, take it very seriously. Speak to your doctor. Get as much medicinal help as you can, and that may involve a prescription of the two medications we talked about. Nicotine replacement, those are going to give you the greatest chances of success. Know why you smoke, know when you smoke, and try to adapt those situations. Don't keep doing the same things that you associate with smoking. And if he Don't hang out with people, places, or things that remind you of the cigarettes. And if he or she relapsed? If you relapse, please uh, stay positive. Take it easy. <laughs> um, positive self-talk. Don't be hard on yourself. We are human beings created by God. You know, God God created us with, to have imperfection. Right. So, you know, we can learn from our struggles. Thank just you so like much any other for addiction. one Thank of you. White Coat family. It was very informative. Dr. Uh, DeSanto, if people need help in Southern California, what's the helpline for DeSanto uh, Clinics? You can go to DeSantoClinics.com, D-E-S-A-N-T-O Clinics.com. And the phone number uh, to make an appointment is 949-432-2000.
0918. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's the hotline to stop smoking. If you need any help in Southern California, that's the phone number you talk Thank to. بنشكر حضراتكم كانت حلقه رائعه استفدنا كتير جدا كسرنا بعض المفاهيم الغلط يا ريت كل الناس تستفيد ورسالتي ليك النهارده قرر النهارده قرر دلوقتي ان انت تبطل تدخين لصحتك ولصحه اسرتك من كل النواحي بشكركم على حسن الاستماع ونشوفكم السبت الجاي وحلقه جديده من وايت كوت